I can imagine that this looks like a lot of work going to all these different countries. Tell me exactly when we're talking about Ghana, you've done a couple um, of videos already. Um, how do you feel when these videos are released? We go through the normal hash hash. I mean, people would deny, people would take you on. Usually, the average businessman or the average corrupt person would not want civil society to focus on the issue because they know that if they focus on the issue, then they are getting exposed. So they will throw in a lot of things. But for me, I keep my focus on because I ensure that I have the evidence whatever you say is about the evidence. And I believe in the judicial system. And I, I, I've always believed in it, especially that of Ghana. And I know whatever you do, you can go to court, you can do anything. I don't really mind. But there's a bit of some anxiety when the film is about to be released. From that you feel? Yeah, okay. because first of all, you see civil society very ready. Everybody's whetted their appetite. Immediately they see the promo, get calls all over. I won't get it because people would usually not have my direct line. But all over me, all my people I work with are calling and you can see the pressure in the office that we've got to release this. It must be very well done. And I mean, you get into bars and you hear people discussing what is about to come and people uh, envisaging what they think would be in there and people giving different themes. and that creates its own excitement and for us it's not that exciting because it's about proving what you have been it's about giving them the dosage that they want to have so it's, it's quite tricky and uh, it has its own feeling not fear of course not fear but yeah. some level of anxiety wow that. you're definitely very bold i mean doing this now when you're sitting there you know you're sitting back at home you're watching what you've produced what you've gone almost risked your life to produce how what do you expect from it what is the aftermath when i look back to the great stories that i have done and there are greater ones yet to come because i think from the last time i was discussing with rahim salasi the stories we were looking at it was clear that the greater stories are yet to come and um, whenever i look back i'm very confident because you can walk into every Ghanaian home today. Every thief, the first person who he thinks about would catch him is me. And I think that is heartwarming. It's not about heroism, no. But it's about creating a society where people know that if they engage in that kind of fraud, they would be exposed one day. It doesn't matter how long it takes, but somebody is watching them. That alone gives me a good feel that we are walking towards a great path. Now again, it's also exciting that this is journalism bred in Africa. And yes, it's walked across all the length and breadth of the world. I don't know which investigative journalists I have not met in my life. All the great ones, from Gunther Varav to all the BBC's Alan Little, to all of them, I've met them, to Christian Amampo and all of them. But I don't think what they do is different from what we do. It's all about diligence and hard work. It's all about believing in the cause we are, we are fighting. It's all about having the passion and ensuring that you are not playing any mischief in the kind of journalism that you are, you are, you are exuding out. When you, Sorry, go on. when you walk towards this path, then you know you are indeed serving civil society. Yeah. Now, when you're doing um, this job, do you feel happy doing it? Is it like, do you have an adrenaline rush? You know, because you're doing dangerous work, anyone can catch you at any moment. How does that make you, like, when you're, when, now I'm talking about your feelings when you're at work, doing your job. Can you describe that to me? It's a mixed feeling. You know, but usually, let me tell you one funny thing that happens every time when I finish a story. You know, I, I almost always don't see the risk. When the story breaks, then civil society begins to say, well, that was dangerous, and then I begin to think it, that whoa. Look at Bangkok prisons. When I was dressed as a Catholic priest into that prison, I thought that was fascinating. And I really didn't feel that risk that, but when it came out, the public outcried, listen, if you are caught out there, 
All that they needed to do was to throw you out in jail. When I did rebel raid, when I was with the rebels, very armed to the teeth, they could have easily shot me, very easily. But for some strange reasons, we, we didn't feel that. I mean, but when it comes out, people then start to do proper analysis. Say, yes, the substance is there, but hey, you could have been shot. And I think that those are very fair comments. So it's a mixed feeling. There's a risk element that you have that feel that you could be risking your life. And oh, there's that bit too that pushes you on, that tells you that, listen, what you are doing is serving public good. Doesn't matter what it takes, you've got to serve the general public. Doesn't matter what it takes. Now look at my trafficking stories. I know definitely that for my intervention, I mean, this little kid at Soja Bar could have ended up dying. Look at the 17 Nigerian girls who ended up being rescued as a result of my story. Look at these Bimba, Bimbila kids. Look at those two children's home and the myriads of life-saving stories that has been churned out by my kind of work. You would know that definitely, but for those moves, certainly human life would have gone lost. And I look back every day and say, thank you Allah for giving me that opportunity. Wow. Your stories, I mean, I think, I, I can completely understand what you're saying. I think it's amazing, you know, doing stories like that, that you can change, save a life, you know, that if it wasn't for you, someone somewhere is, you know, getting hurt or dying or, uh, I'm just sorry, I'm just. So I want to go back into also when you did your story with, in the asylum, in the ho sorry, with the mental um, patients, and you actually put yourself in people's sh you know shoes, and you actually let yourself get injected. How were you able to also withstand that and like go through that and be, you know, what 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 was some of the things that you thought at that very moment when they were injecting you? First of all, I think that we don't just walk into a story. It takes a lot of research to get in there. And I must tell you here that I don't leave any of these things because if you want to stay up there, you've got to take all these things very serious. We commit a lot of resources, we do a lot of research, we speak to the people who need to be spoken to. So yes, yeah, psychiatric hospital, we did our reconnaissance. We realized that indeed the best way of telling that story was to go undercover as a patient. Yes, we took the injections and all that. but. Um, it was safe because my team of doctors were there. Okay. They ensured that every single medicine that I took, we could be able to reverse the situation. Um, I think the first five days of my stay as a patient in the psychiatric hospital was what was problematic. It was problematic because I didn't anticipate that I was going to meet that syndicate that sells heroin, cocaine and cannabis within the five days. Now, you would agree with me that I had just gone checked myself into the hospital. I was on medication as a patient. And you know, the medications makes you drowsy and all that. Mm -hmm. And of course, I didn't get into the hospital to go sleep. So my doctors looked for an antidote so that when I'm sleepy, I would take some caffeine-oriented drugs to ensure that I can stay awake yeah. and do my filming. Now, I was new to the system. I was taking the drugs and taking the anti to ensure that I can stay awake. Then all of a sudden, the story breaks up that the cannabis syndicate opens up. And as an investigator, when that opens, you have to take the opportunity. Now, I came into contact with cannabis, heroin, and, and cocaine. And I mean, it means that I had a lot of stuff in my system at one particular time. If I got a bit murky that I had to check out of the hospital after five days because wow. I couldn't contain and my doctors were always on the standby. So when I checked out, they had to put in infusion to ensure that they take out all bad substances that had gone in there and to ensure that I can stay up. Of course, I, I know when I came out, they s said that we didn't think you should go back, but hey, if back. I've been able to cross five days <laughs> and seen all the bad things, why shouldn't I go back? Yeah. Again, what comes to mind when I look at the psychiatric hospital story was when I came out and then um, I realized that infertility, okay, let me leave that. No, no, go ahead. Tell me about it, the fertility bit. Yeah, um, you know, 
Yes, it's a bit about the medicines in which affects your 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 fertility in a way, you know. So when I checked out of the hospital, one of the key things I wanted to find out was whether everything was okay and everything was working. And I came out of the hospital and I was checking and I realized that things were not working well. I said, whoa, what is this? It was just so I called my doctors and I'm like, look, this is not what I knew. I mean, it's changed. And they're like, well, let's hold on. Fortunately, after a week, it started working well. And so, so, wow. sure, now. So, the medication they were giving you was making you infertile? Yeah, that's or... the side effect of it, yeah. Wow. Mm. And how, that's, that's, that's unbelievable. And how did you, and did you do anything about it at that very moment? No, it works it? now, everything is fine. Everything yeah, is fine. <laughs> it's, it's in place. Okay, yeah, okay, but, well. Yeah. And that's what you're seeing from Anas Aramiyao. Anas, we do have more for you, but let's take a break. We'll be back in a moment.